What's up, world? YouTube. How y'all doing out there? Thank you. I appreciate you tuning in. And you know I love you. Right now, it's a beautiful day. And these past few days have been really beautiful and inspiring for me. So much so that I decided to make a video about Yes, I'm making a video about you, about the sun. And another sun gazing video, but I'm gonna focus on two things in this video. I'm gonna talk about what happens to the blood when we see the sun, when we look at the sun, or if we see just daylight. And I'm gonna talk about photosynthesis like real human photosynthesis. Can we actually photosynthesize just like plants do? Can we absorb the sun and directly make energy just like plants do? Photosynthesis. Yes, we can. We have those abilities. And uh, we, we make energy in three known ways. Our cells can make, uh, it's actually a backup energy system, but our cells can make energy through fermentation, which does not require oxygen. And we can make energy through respiration, which are our mitochondria uh, metabolize oxygen and they can make energy and it requires oxygen. And we can make energy through photosynthesis directly from the sun. And that's what I'm gonna talk about. And I guess I'm gonna tie these two things together, photosynthesis and the blood, because they operate together. But when we look at the sun or just see normal sunlight or normal daylight, it irradiates our blood. Looking directly, it irradiates it even more. But it irradiates our blood. And how does the light irradiate our blood? How does the blood, how does the light get into our blood? It gets into our blood by our red blood cells. Because our red blood cells have an iron protein on them called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is most well known for carrying oxygen. But hemoglobin also carries light. And I'll come back to that in a moment. But for now, I want you to think about Okay, hemoglobin. What is hemoglobin? What is hemoglobin very similar to? In fact, what is hemoglobin almost identical to? Hemoglobin is structurally almost identical to chlorophyll. If you look at, if you look at both, both of these, a, a chlorophyll and hemoglobin, which chlorophyll is plant blood, if you compare it to our blood, the um, hemoglobin in our blood, it's exactly the same. The only difference is that in plant blood, the, uh, the, 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 the center uh, molecule is magnesium. In our blood, the center molecule is iron. And the difference between magnesium and iron is that iron has more electrons. Iron can hold more light because photons are attracted to electrons. So iron, iron can carry more energy. So just that by itself should kind of tell you or let you know, be a big clue that we can photosynthesize because our blood is almost identical to plant blood. And our hemoglobin, by riding on our red blood cells, can carry light and oxygen to various tissues throughout our bodies. Now, switching gears, uh, let's talk about when, when our red blood cells, the hemoglobin on our red blood cells, uh, capture light, because they capture light. Uh, what are some examples of like what happens like when they capture light? Well, let's think about our arterial blood. Arterial blood is oxygenated blood. It's when our it's when our uh, it's when our hemoglobin is 
oxygenated. It has attracted the oxygen. At that point, or that that blood, the oxygenated blood gives off a bright red color. So oxygenated blood is a bright red color. But it absorbs strongly in the blue, the green, and yellow spectrum, but gives off a bright red color. So oxygenated blood absorbs strongly in the blue, the green, the yellow spectrum, blue, green, yellow light. Now, deoxygenated blood, our arterial blood, which doesn't have much, much oxygen, it absorbs strongly in the green range and it releases slash gives off blue and red frequency or, or color which makes it a it looks darker or the it makes the color different so those are like the reasons for our differences in the color of our blood whether it's oxygenated or deoxygenated because the oxygen whether it carries oxygen or not determines what type of light that it can absorb. Now, when the when our red blood cells uh, travel and, and take take our hemoglobin to our various tissues in our bodies to deliver them along with the oxygen, deliver the oxygen and deliver the light to the various tissues, it's it of course it deliver, delivers oxygen uh, for the mitochondria so that uh, the mitochondria can do their thing and and create energy they need oxygen they need electrons we they get the electrons script from food through the electron by the electron chain through the electron chain transport but our cells also have a pigment that's very similar to uh, the pigment in hemoglobin that absorbs the light and those pigments are called cytochromes so our cells can absorb light like our, our, our tissues can our tissues our cells can absorb light and uh, these cytochromes are pigments just like the pigments in our uh, red blood cells which carry the hemoglobin now, I mentioned our, our blood captures, directly captures from the sun uh, these few main frequencies, the, the, the blue, the green, the yellow. And uh, red, our I know our mitochondria give off infrared light. They, they make heat, and heat is basically infrared light. And uh, infrared light is invisible to the human eye. Like snakes can see it. A snake can see you in the dark, but you can't you can't see like a warm-blooded animal in the dark because we don't have the ability to see infrared. But certain animals can, like a snake can. Now our mitochondria give off infrared light. Infrared light is a major player in in our, our physical body and keeping us healthy. Red light is what turns the water in our body which we're, we're mostly water into a battery. It helps separate the charges. So infrared light is probably, if I had to, if I had to just uh, single it out and, and, and give a definitive statement, is the most important light. And it's 42% infrared or infrared, 42% red light in the sun. That should give you a big clue of how important it is. Now the other. Uh, light that I didn't really talk about that our uh, that our uh, eyes pick up and which t takes a ride on our red blood cells is UV light. Now our eyes do absorb UV light and I did a video called Eyeball Energetics and uh, I kind of broke down the eyeball. Uh, I admit it was kind of poorly done. I'd like to remake that video because I know so much more now. But it was still some good information in that video. I made it about a year ago. And uh, the outer coating of our eye, like the outer clear coating of our eye, I forget, I, I forget the name, but 
it's the outer coating, a clear outer coating. I think it's a conjunct conjunctiva, I believe. Don't quote me on it. But uh, it blocks excessive UV light. It blocks like 97 up like 97 percent or more uv light so the remaining amount of uv light that gets through it we use it we use it for signaling to tell our body to do specific things to give specific information about our environment so that we can adapt accordingly so that we our body our biology knows how to deal with its surroundings because like a a big sign of fitness one of the, the the biggest barometers of physical fitness is how you can handle your environment if you can handle your environment well you're probably really 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 healthy but uh where was i going with this yeah i was talking about uv uv light seeing uv light yeah and uv light is a major player it does it does so many other things I'm gonna make a video in the future about UV light through the eye and when I say UV light I'm talking about in nature's package in the Sun I'm not talking about anything artificial anything like that but I think that's gonna be real interesting and I'm gonna talk about the brain and I'm gonna talk about UV light and it's gonna be real cool stay tuned for that I think it's gonna be good but uh yeah our eyes absorb a very limited amount of UV light. But what does absorb lots of UV light is our skin, the melanin in our skin, or the pigment in our skin. Actually, pigment all, all within our bodies. The pigments is, are what absorb the light. But we all know that our skin can absorb lots of UV light. And if you know about vitamin D, vitamin D is the result of us absorbing UV light. And of course, you won't be able to make vitamin D if you're dehydrated. And dehydration doesn't just come from not drinking water, but dehydration comes from not making water through our mitochondria because our mitochondria make water. And the water that our mitochondria make is really special. It's nothing like the water that we drink and and it's the water within us made by our mitochondria is, is very different. And that water that water uh, can limit or allow us to absorb a lot more sun and raise our vitamin D. Vitamin D is basically a, a barometer of how much energy we are absorbing from the sun. That's really what it tells you. And uh, of course, vitamin D is your immune system, your immune system, bones, but it's so much more than that. That's what it's most known for. But our skin is a major maker, absorber, creator of vitamin D, and it's made by absorbing U the UV spectrum of light. So, just in thinking about that, maybe, maybe the eyes aren't best suited to receive huge amounts of UV. Maybe they are. I'm going to make a video in the future about that, kind of discussing, and I'm going to put, put a platform out for us to talk about it and understand it better so we can do it safely and know, just basically understand this. Just create, generate some some discussion about it and again it's gonna be real it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun it's gonna be real interesting when I when I make it because I have some uh, ideas that are really they surprised me when I when they came to me but it's gonna be about UV UV light and it's gonna be about the brain and yeah stay tuned but yeah that's <laughs> I'll stop here I'll stop here with the video and uh you know, I just want to talk about some things that happen to us when we when we sun gaze, when we see uh, sunlight, and how we feed ourselves. You know, the fact that we photosynthesize and we don't even realize it. And I think by us understanding it, we can connect with nature better. And 
be better versions of ourselves because a lot of our disconnect is just fear and propaganda of just not knowing what's what from this long divorce that we've had from 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 this from from nature from what's just just it's right before our faces and you know it's, it's real and we need it and we're taught to that we don't need it and we should run from it but I'm trying to I'm trying to marry nature and develop an incredible relationship with it and hopefully through that develop an incredible relationship with everyone everything through being a better version of myself and connecting with you all so I'll end the video here and again I appreciate you for watching and I love you you love yourself and let's stay connected I'm gone